Hey Stinkers, Sean here. A lot of you have been requesting uh, a bit of guidance when it comes to playing Juice Harp. These funky little instruments, a lot of you know that I make uh, and sell in an Etsy shop. So I'll be going through each model that I make and giving you a brief rundown on how it's played. I've already done a how to make your own series on YouTube and I encourage you, if you haven't seen them already, to check it out. And I'd really like you guys to, to participate and carry on the art form, because that's what it's all about. Let's start with a bit of brief anatomy for the instrument. As you can see, it's pretty simple, straightforward. It's got three basic parts. It's got a handle, it's got a reed, and it's got a striking end. Let's start with grip. As you can see, I keep almost all of the material inside of my closed hand. I'm holding it like a toothbrush and my thumb is bracing the back about as high up as it can possibly go without impeding the motion. Oh, as you can see, I just got in the way. But I want to get my thumb as high up there as possible without getting in the way of the reed. The reed being this middle mobile part of the instrument in between the arms of the frame. Finally, we have the striking button at the far end, and as its name implies, you hit it, the reed moves and produces a vibration. You might be tempted to utilize the full surface area of the striking button when, when implementing your playing, but you don't need to do that. Only the very end is necessary, and it's much more of a uh, finesse approach as opposed to raw power going through the instrument. As you can hear, it's violent. You might end up hitting the, uh, the reed itself on either arm or the frame. So just hitting the end is enough to get that, that good vibration going. You basically want your mouth to close around the pendulum of the reed. What I like to do is take the curve of my thumb and place it against my cheek right here. And that way I can anchor the instrument while I'm playing and ensure that it won't be moving forward or backward as I'm striking it. From here you can see that my open mouth facilitates the reed moving in and out pretty easily. I don't want the reed to come in contact with the corner of my mouth as prolonged friction can actually end up cutting your mouth because bamboo is pretty sharp. Even though I sand them down pretty well, uh, that quick in and out motion against the sensitive skin of the lips uh, can get painful. So make sure the reed isn't coming in contact with any part of your lips. As you're striking with an open mouth, it'll begin to produce sound pretty clearly. As you become more comfortable creating sound this way, begin to close your lips lightly around the arms of the frame. And that's basically it. You can begin exploring, manipulating the sound by, by sounding out your vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Although you're not activating your vocal cords while you do this, you're rather mimicking the shape of your mouth and throat when saying those vowels. A, really all there is to it. Mix and match. You can even throw in mutes. If you want to shove your tongue into your cheek against the reed as it's moving, just one more way to vary the sounds. encourage you to get creative. Get some friends together, make your own, and, and start a little band. It's a lot of fun, easy to collaborate with, and very approachable, even if you have no experience prior with music. I hope you've enjoyed this brief tutorial. Stay tuned for the next one.